Hello, this is a short video about the fundamentals of investing in the stock market. We are going to learn how to calculate whether a stock is worth buying right now using a ratio called the price to earnings or PE ratio. In front of you is Benjamin Franklin on the $100 bill. Benjamin Franklin was not only a, a great businessman, but uh, he was one of the founders of the United States, and he now is on the $100 bill. Incidentally, this is a Federal Reserve note, which means it represents debt owed to a private banking cartel but more on that later. Let's get rid of the useless paper money and learn something useful, namely how to calculate the price to earnings ratio of a stock. This is called the P-E ratio. It's a very crude tool that can help us get a first step towards understanding whether a group of stocks, among a group of stocks, which one might be the best to purchase right now. All you need to accomplish what we're going to do today is a working internet connection and Google and a simple calculator like this. If you don't have a physical calculator or a calculator on your phone, you can use Google as a calculator. So let's consider some companies that are widely known that are publicly traded. One would be Netflix. The video streaming and DVD service. Another big company would be Apple. And uh, another company right now that's very big is Amazon. In, in stock investing, we don't make choices based on mere personal preference. So we need to discover of these three companies, which one not only is a good stock to buy, but a good stock to buy right now. It might be a good company. I like all three companies for various reasons, but given their stock market prices and their earnings per share, is it appropriate to purchase them right now or are they overvalued or uh, extremely overvalued? When what I say overvalued, I mean that the market price per share that this stock has a stock price on the stock market that changes every day is the price right now uh, too high for us to invest in the stock so disclaimer before we continue 
What we are going to learn how to calculate today is insufficient to make an investing decision. It is merely one very basic introductory way to evaluate a stock. There are many limits to the P-E ratio that I'll, I'll touch on, but suffice it to say that you cannot decide as a final judgment whether the company that we decide on here with the P-E ratio is appropriate to invest in, but it can give us a way to eliminate some companies that might be extremely overvalued or overpriced right now. So let's start with Netflix. Now, this is the company name. But each one of these companies has a corresponding stock symbol. Sometimes this is called a ticker. Refers back to the days of ticker tape when the stocks would come printing out of a machine referenced by a one to four letter symbol that will represent the stock. So in order to find out what the stock symbol is for an individual company, we just need to go to Google and we'll look it up. Just creating a little table here to make it a little bit more visually obvious what we're doing. So now I'm going to transition to our internet browser and show you how we can gather this data. Okay, so in order to find out what the ticker symbol is for any company, you can just type in uh, to Google Netflix stock symbol. Just Google that and you see that Netflix is traded on the NASDAQ. That's a An ex that's the exchange that it's traded on, the electronic exchange, NASDAQ, and its symbol is NFLX. Okay, now we have to look up Apple. And Apple stock symbol is AAPL. So we'll enter that data here, A, A, P, L, and finally Amazon. We'll go back here and type Amazon stock symbol. 
and we see that Amazon's stock symbol is AMZN. A M Z N. Okay. So the next piece of information that we need is the price per share. which we saw when we were looking uh, up the stock symbols. So we'll just quickly get those prices again. Amazon was the last company we looked up. Its price per share is $1,500.25. one thousand five hundred dollars and twenty five cents now let's check Apple's price per share one hundred seventy six dollars and twenty one cents One seventy six twenty one for Apple, and then finally Netflix. Netflix stock price is three hundred one dollars and five cents. So we'll just record that really quickly. Netflix is 301 and five cents. So these are our prices per share. One question is, can we tell any information whatsoever about the relative merits? Notice I said relative merits of any of these stocks as they relate to one another based solely on this information? And the answer is no. These prices only relate to them, to their corresponding prices for this company over time. But they, they do not relate at all to other companies' pricing structures. So we can't tell that Apple's the cheapest or that Amazon is the most expensive that's certainly important when you're deciding whether you can afford to even purchase a share of stock. But when evaluating the criteria for investing, we can't rely on price alone as a gauge. So we need something to compare it to. And the price to earnings ratio compares the price per share to the earnings per share. So the next piece of data will be the earnings per share. Earnings per share, this is sometimes abbreviated or very often I should say abbreviated EPS EPS earnings per share sometimes you'll even see this one abbreviated PPS for price per share but that's less often usually this will be price over earnings per share 
it's understood that the price refers to the price of one share and not the price of the entire company. Uh, the reason we can relate these two numbers is because they share a common denominator. Price per share, earnings per share. So if we take the price per share and divide it by the earnings per share, we have a legitimate number because both share the common denominator of being one share for relating to one share. So now let's find the earnings per share. And there are many ways to locate this data. I can imagine criticism for taking the long route, so to speak, but there is only one way of being absolutely certain that we're getting reliable data because websites differ and I want to show you how you can find this data for free reliably and be certain of your source without having to purchase a Bloomberg terminal or have an account with a brokerage firm or rely on websites that aggregate this information like MSN, Money, Yahoo Finance or Google Finance even though it's likely you can get the information from those sources. It's just, it won't be clear what information you're getting. And it's just better. There's so much that we can learn from the method I'll show you. This is the general case for how to locate data about a company that I'm, I'll go ahead and teach the long route and it will pay off for you as we get more advanced in stock market analysis. So, I'm just going to narrate as I locate the information for the first stock, which is Netflix, NFLX. We need to remember that symbol. And the search tool that we're going to use will be the information directly from the SEC's website. That's the Securities and Exchange Commission. And we're going to be using a database they create that's available to the public called EDGAR. So we're going to, first we're going to find how to find this, then we'll learn how to locate data on the EDGAR database about any publicly traded company. Let me show my screen again. And let me make this bigger so you can really see what I'm doing. Okay. So now we need to go to Google again and type in SEC Edgar database. The first result on Google says company search page, and that's what we're looking for. We want to look for information about companies on the Securities and Exchange Commission. The cursor defaults to the company name, but as I said, some people call uh, various companies by various names, and this didn't used to be here. You had to know the ticker symbol. Uh, so we're going to do it like a, a stock trader, and we're going to enter the ticker symbol over here in what's called fast search. So remember the symbol for Netflix was NFLX. So we'll enter that here, and we'll click search. Within the search results, you'll see every document that is filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission for for years and years and years. So we, we want to isolate our search to one specific type of document called a 10K. And that is 10 dash K. So what you need to do is go under the search filter filing type and type 10 dash K and then click search over here. And what you're looking for is the most recent 10K, not an amendment. You're looking for 
the 10-K. So this will be the document we want to look at right here. There, this is a new feature as well, interactive data. I want you to ignore this for now. There is, there is so much variation between what information is displayed by the interactive data feature that I just want to show you how to do this the old school way since this is how I learned and I know this works. So click on under 10K, the most recent one. This was filed on January 29th of 2018. So this will be for 2017's data. Click on Documents. And you're taken to this web page. Once again, you have a huge list of potential things to click on. But again, you're looking for the 10K, which is going to be located right here. So you click on this hyperlink. It, this is just meaningless uh, text here, but we're clicking on the hyperlink 10K. And you're taken to this standard filing report. Uh, this is the 10K for Netflix filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And what we're looking for, if you scroll down slowly, you'll get to a hyperlink table of contents. These hyperlinks are very helpful. They didn't used to exist. Uh, I'll quickly scroll through the whole document so you can see just how much information is displayed in this filing report. This contains all of the data about the company for the uh, for an entire year and it it goes on and on and on so we can do everything we need to do with stock market investing with this document the uh, thing you need to look for is part two item six selected financial data that's what we want to look at so click that and you're taking your jump down to this part of the report and we are specifically going to look at the consolidated statements of operations this is a profit and loss statement or an income statement those are different ways of referring to the same thing and we see the total net income here, but what we're looking for is the earnings per share. And for the purposes of this pre uh, discussion, we're gonna refer to the basic earnings per share. And that, that data point is right there, $1.29 for 2017, which is the most recent year that data is available. So $1.29 is what we want. That's the earning, the basic earnings per share for Netflix 2017 data. So over here in our table, we'll put $1.29. cents. Now we'll do the same thing for Apple. I'll just back up to the search page and I'll put in our symbol for Apple, which was AAPL. And I'll click search. Then under the filter results, section I'm going to change the filing type or restrict the filing type to the 10-K report. I don't know if this is still the case but uh, it used to requ be required that you put that dash symbol there or it would not return the results so not 10K but 10-K just to be extremely clear and then click search and now it's filtered all those documents to show just the annual reports, the 10-K. So here's the most recent one for 20, filed on, in November of 2017. 
this may refer to 2016 data, but it will be the most recent data that's available. So let's see what we've got. We click on Documents, and then we're going to click the link for the 10K. This document includes a nice little logo. It's the Form 10K, and this is Apple Incorporated. We'll scroll down. And just like in the Netflix document, we're going to click the hyperlinked table of contents entry for selected financial data. And here we are, a slightly different presentation, but it's the same, it's the same data set as Netflix. So here, these are results for 2017, and the earnings per share for Apple, and again we're using basic earnings per share, is $9.27. So we'll go back to our table. And we'll put $9.27. Finally, we'll do Amazon, A-M-Z-N. We'll scroll back to our search page and search for Amazon, A-M-Z-N, and we'll click search. And then under filter results, we will filter the filing type to just those that show the 10-K. Remember the dash, 10-K. Click on search, and here we are, filed on February 2nd of 2018, Netflix 10-K, Click on Documents. Under Documents, we're going to select the 10K by clicking this HTML document right here. And here we are at the Form 10K for Amazon.com Incorporated. And if we scroll down a little bit, we can select again the selected consolidated financial data and the first financial statement that's presented is a statement of operations that's the income statement or profit and loss statement and what we're looking for again presented slightly differently than it was on the other two 10 K's but still there basic earnings per share for Apple and one pitfall to watch out for is that those other two statements, they put the most recent year on the far left. But notice this is for 2013. The most recent year for, 20, for Amazon is on the right side. So we will look basic earnings per share and scroll over and then we'll see that the basic earnings per share for 2017 for Amazon was six dollars and thirty two cents so I'll write in here six dollars and thirty two cents now we have all the information we need to compute the ratio price to earnings. So we'll create another column in our table. And we'll call this the price to earnings. ratio 
or this is how it's most commonly referred to, the P-E ratio. To do this, we'll need a very simple tool, really just a four-function calculator, or if you don't have an old-school calculator, you can use your phone, or you can use Google. If you type a math problem into Google, it will compute it, but we're going to use the old-school calculator since I can keep it in frame. The first stock is Netflix. Its price per share is $301.05, and its earnings per share is $1.29. So price divided by earnings will give us the P-E ratio. Price per share divided by earnings per share. So in my calculator, I will type 301.05 divided by $1.29, 1.29. And I'll get back a ratio, and that is 233.37. Now, to make things really simple and to avoid wondering if this represents money, remember this is a ratio. It doesn't represent any dollars. It's just a number. It's a multiple. It's the multiple of the price to the earnings per share. So we'll just take the, the rounded to the nearest single digit. So that would be 233, 233. Okay, easy enough. Next, we'll find the PE ratio for Apple, which will just be 176.21. Divided by 9.27. And that gives us a PE ratio of 19. So we'll record that data here. 19. Finally, uh, for Amazon, we'll divide $1,500 and 25 cents, which was the price per share for Amazon, divide that by $6.32, which was the earnings per share. And that gives us a P-E ratio of 237, 237. And 237. Okay, so now we have the data that we need to evaluate among these three stocks, which one of these stocks is, of all three, the, which, which ones can we eliminate, which one uh, is the most obviously reasonable to invest in. So. When I worked in stocks, someone told me a way of thinking about the P-E ratio that I found very interesting and very compelling. And what they said was, the P-E ratio, the way you think about it is, if Netflix has a P-E ratio of 233, the way to think about it is to say, what, you're th what you have to believe in order to invest in Netflix with a P.E. ratio of 233 is that Netflix will be able to earn at least $1.29 per share for the next 233 years. And that gives us some basis for evaluating this number. A P.E. ratio of 233 is extraordinarily high. 
that does not mean that Netflix is a bad investment. It, it It's just, as I started this tutorial, I said PE ratios are an inadequate tool. But if we're only using PE, if that's all we have is the PE ratio, and we're evaluating these three stocks, we see that Netflix and Amazon have PE ratios of over 200. Apple's PE ratio is 19. And that is much lower than 233 or 237. So while I do not believe that I could state with any confidence what Netflix or Amazon will be doing over 200 years from now, or even if they will exist as companies, I'm more confident, relatively speaking, of course, I, I wish the 19 was lower. I wish it was under 12, cl as close to zero as possible. Uh, it, with PE ratios, lower is better. Lower is better. It means that the, the stock, the lower the PE ratio, the more likely the price is to rise. Uh, and and I'll, I'll I mean I'll just explain if the PE ratio for Amazon was one, and the historical PE ratio for all stocks listed in the stock market fluctuated between say 12 and 22, then relative to the stock market, Apple would be undervalued using only the criterion of the P.E. ratio. Again, insufficient, but informative. At least among these three stocks, if we had to choose one based on no other information than the P.E. ratio, we would choose Apple because relative to the other two, it's cheaper. Now, there are so many mitigating factors to this and complicating factors that it, what I'm about to say will just ramify my disclaimer that this is an insufficient tool. Earnings per share is a highly manipulable uh, piece of data. Earnings per share manipulation is very common. But what's more, what's more, different stocks have their own history of PE ratios. And Stocks that are considered part of certain industries will have an industry average P.E. ratio that you'll need to consider. But again, just as an isolated case, and in order to learn how to find financial data on the SEC's Edgar database, I hope this was helpful in taking a first step toward learning how to choose a stock. Thank you.